work is uh, inspired by three things, by humankind, by nature and by technology. So this idea of working with nature and investigating nature and translating natural phenomena into architecture and design is sort of reoccurring in our work. And often uh, in nature you find membranes. Leaves are membranes, spider webs are membranes, um, soap bubbles are membranes. And often uh, we use these membranes to introduce a very light materiality uh, into architecture, um, which can be incredibly strong, incredibly efficient and incredibly sustainable. So the idea of reskinning buildings is that by introducing additional layers, additional layers of membranes to existing buildings, we could enhance the performance of the building and at the same time completely transform the appearance of the building. We took the UTS tower as an example and um, we allocated a number of metal bars to the outside of the building and then stretch a membrane that naturally follows the shape of the metal bars and the original building um, over the outside skin. And that automatically gives you a certain shape, which is a very elegant and very sort of sensual shape in a way. And it completely transforms the building with very little effort. UTS Tower is one of the very controversial uh, buildings in Sydney that has been built in a certain time. It doesn't seem to live up to today's standards in terms of the aesthetics, but also in terms of the performance. It's essentially an air-conditioned enclosed box that doesn't let a lot of light in, doesn't let a lot of air in, and uh, people don't particularly like it. The idea is by reskinning it with a lightweight membrane that we could shade the building and we could open up the windows, we could uh, replace the tinted glass with clear glass, we could add natural ventilation, and so the building could actually be lighter and friendlier. We have uh, computational methods to understand nature better. Nature is very complex, and computers help us sort of unravel this complexity. And that's why it sort of sparks a new generation of naturally inspired projects. The Green Void was an exciting project to transform the atrium of Customs House, which is a heritage building in the center of the city, um, with very minimal effort and minimal material into a completely different space. So it changed the perception of the space, the experience of the space. And uh, what we did is we located different points within the atrium that were of strategic importance for us and connected them with a membrane sculpture um, with only 30 kilograms of material, but covering 3,000 cubic meters of space. We defined these locations in space and then fed that information to a computer program that calculates the minimal surface connections between these rings. So essentially the design is a mathematical formula and as soon as we change one of the rings, the computer would calculate another uh, evolution of that. The material um, used for the green void is a nylon fabric, a stretchable fabric, and while um, it sort of comes out of a ball of fabric, when you stretch it out and you give it curvature, then it achieves a structural stiffness. So it looks solid and you think it's something incredibly strong, but at the end of the day, it's collapsible and you can transport it uh, in cabin luggage to any place in the world. We want our office to be a laboratory, um, which means we develop ideas. A laboratory is sort of open, it's experimental, it uh, involves a lot of different disciplines, it's open for other people to join in. Architecture, because that's what we do, and visionary architecture, because we don't see architecture as an assembly of um, floor plates to maximize square meters for the revenue of an investor. We see architecture as a contribution to society and a reflection of the time that we're in.